couch Dogs, me, adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, welcome back to yet another awesome Fender Style lesson here on Lickin' Riff in which we're gonna experiment with Nothing Else Matters. We're gonna take Nothing Else Matters and twist it and I'm gonna help you make it completely your own. Okay, this is a great way to learn musical improvisation, to take something that you know and manipulate the heck out of it. Okay, so um, you need to know Nothing Else Matters if you don't know how to play it go uh, watch my video on the Nothing Else Matters intro and guitar riff and then come back and learn how to make it your own. But for those of you who already know it, let's start right away from the 7-7. Seven seven. Okay. Um, because the intro okay, starts with an E minor arpeggio, you can't do a lot with that because you want to build up, you want to create a musical composition out of this and keep it coherent. So let's start right away from the 7-7, seven, seven, right? And uh, that 7 pull off to 0 over there. So what you can do is you can slide into the 7, right? And you can also do a 7 pull off to 5, slide to 7, okay? The guitar effect. This is a great ornamentation, so you can play the 6th string with the slide. Okay? And this creates a really interesting variation. Okay, and then you continue with the open uh, E string and the open E minor arpeggio. Okay? You can play the chord also. Okay? You, uh, you can play 7 and then slide from 5 to 7 and play the chord. Okay? The whole chord strings 1, 2, 3, and 6. That also works. Okay? Um, but I, I actually like this. Yeah, it's subtle. And it's nice. It's a, a completely different direction from the original, that's why. Okay, and then you have the... Right? This line on the E string. What you can do is you can harmonize it. Right? So if you have... Okay, 7 and 8, and then... Okay, 7, 8, 7, hammer on, pull off, and then... 5, you can harmonize okay, with thirds, okay, third harmonies. Okay, I have a lesson on how to solo with third harmonies if you like to explore that, but I'll tell you what you can do right now. You have 7 and 8 on strings 1 and 2, and then 8 and 10, okay, okay. This is all in the E minor scale. And then you have 7 and 8 again, and you can use an extra finger to hammer on the 8 and pull it off the E string. Okay, and then you have five and seven, so it's um, okay, and then you have seven and eight again, okay, because you have okay, this is the line, okay, so you just harmonize it, and then you can take this the five and seven, okay, down to three and five, you can slide it down, so you have a harmonized line. And then open strings one and two. So there you have it, the same line, just harmonized. Okay? Experimentation doesn't mean necessarily completely changing. Right? You don't uh, use a different mode, for example. Okay, you can do it. You can do six instead of five, and then you get a different different scale. Okay, so um okay, and then six to three. And then you get a mode. Okay? But let's harmonize it. Okay, you can also harmonize the six. Okay? Instead of seven and eight and five and seven, you have six and seven. Okay? So uh, it's kind of um turns kind of into um Balkan music. So um But then you have you have to stretch your finger here because you have six and seven. You can't slide down to three and four. Yeah, this is way off. This is now an augmented sound. So you want to keep it three and five. So you have to stretch the finger and change it from one fret to two frets. Okay. Okay. But this is going a bit too far. I didn't plan on this. But this is what experimentation is all about. So 
or this. So let's play uh, everything just to, you know, get the ears into it. And then you have the A is the A minor 7 line. Okay, with 5 and 5 on strings 2 and 3 with these two fingers because you need the first one. Okay, for 0, 2 and 3 on the bass to turn it into a C chord. Okay, so the original line Okay, is arpeggiated with two pull off to zero on the E string. Okay, so you can experiment with, you can change the, the arpeggio itself. Okay, you can make it a little bit faster. Okay, you can, um, you can play the two pull off to zero on the E string a little bit early. Okay, you can uh, create a different rhythm. Okay, you can hammer on and pull it up. Okay, this is nice because you have the same E note okay, on two strings. Okay, so you get again a different ornamentation here. So okay, you can play the two twice. Okay, you can play it as a block chord. Okay, and then you have not much you can do here. Okay, you can hammer it on and slide it. But why? This is, you know, this is taking it into showing off uh, territory. Okay, this is a good enough line. There's no reason to change it. And then you have... Okay, this is the line. Okay. You can change it if you like. Uh, now the pull-off is on three because we're on a C chord. Okay, so you can change the arpeggio. Okay, I played the E string twice. I played... Okay, and then you can harmonize with the second string. Okay, you can again change the positioning. Okay. Experiment with this, but again, some lines don't need to be changed. And again, I think I'm slightly out of tune, so... Okay, and then... You slide the chord into D, okay, two frets up to seven on strings two and three, so. Okay, remember to just slide it at the right place, okay? Um, the exact place in the original, okay? No matter what you change, keep, keep your basis, the original, nothing else matters. Okay, and then you have D. Okay, you have... Line. Um, again, I see nothing. Okay, you can change it into a groove. Then you play the chord twice and then slide it. Then you have the D and the arpeggio, and then okay, the original solo is a stroke of brilliance. Don't want to touch it. Okay, you can you can try. Try to change it a little bit, but you won't find anything better than okay than the original. The original is a stroke of brilliance. We can't top that. Okay? okay, you can try variations on it. Okay. Mm. Okay. You can create a different line altogether. I hammered on seven and five on strings one and two. Okay. Okay, you can pull them off and then hammer them on. Okay, you can you can vary it on the original. Okay, and then you have this. The harmonics. So you can play a harmonic solo here you can do okay, you can do something like this uh, natural harmonic solo of some sort okay i uh, again i have a lesson for that i made it a few years ago called how to solo with natural harmonics it's actually a lot of fun uh, so this is a pentatonic line 
Okay, it's uh, you have the. Okay, and then you can do the. Okay, or a variation on this. Okay, any variation. Um, yeah, you can do this. Okay, any variation on the natural harmonics on twelve and seven. Now I'm playing twelve and seven on strings five and six, and then on strings four and five. And then on strings three and four. And then I'm playing the E string, the E bass string open with um, the uh, harmonics on 12 on strings one, two, and three. Hey, okay, okay, go down. Right, so. Right? You can do a different variation. You can do. Okay? Any harmonic uh, combination between seven and 12 will create harmonies. Okay? As long as you combine the two. Okay, so. Okay? Try it. Try to randomly skip between them. Okay, and you will see. Any, anything will work here as long as you finish on the right note, which is the high E harmonic on 12 on the E string. Okay, that's your target note. Anything you do before that will work. Right? Trust me on this. Try it. And then you have the. The E minor, D, and C lines. This is where we're gonna have a lot of fun because you don't have to play the arpeggios. Again, you can play the chord, you can play around with the chord. So instead of playing the whole bar for E minor, you can play seven, eight, and nine on strings one, two, and three. Okay, you can slide into it, you can slide the chord. Okay, you can play the third string on nine and then the chord again. Okay, you can arpeggiate differently. Okay, you can pull it off on seven. Okay, you can pull off nine to seven on the E string. Okay, you can open the E string. You can just play around with the arpeggio and slide. Okay, you can slide twice. You can slide three times. You can do a combination of this. Okay, and then you have Okay. You have D and C, and again, you can use the, the same shape that you used before in the intro, in part one. So you can do 5, 7, 7 on strings 1, 2, and 3 with the open D string. That's D, 5, 7, 7, and the D string. You can pull off the 5 to 0 on the E string. Okay. You can arpeggio. Okay. Okay. You can slide the chord down to C afterwards. Okay, I slid on the second string. Okay, and then you need the C bass. So three on the sixth string. Uh, sorry, um, on the fifth string. And you can bar. Okay, you can bar if you like. Okay, so. Okay, so. Okay, and then you just arpeggiate the C chord because you already soloed on the D string. There's no reason to solo all the time. You can solo a little bit and then play a chord. Okay, and you have these chords three times. Okay, so experiment with that. Okay, let me just try a few different variations. You can also include the harmonics, the natural harmonics if you like, for E minor. So, can arpeggiate one line and you can play a block groove the next time. Just taking the chord down and up one fret. Even one fret up would do. Okay. I'm just toying around. That's that's the main point here. To see how many variations I can come up with. Seven. Right? So what can you do with that? 
you can do a lot with G uh, here, right? Because here you can pull off three to zero on the second string. You can play the E pentatonic. Okay, 3-0 on strings 1 and 2, and 2-0 on the third string. Don't overdo it. Just play one lick. Okay, so... Okay, and then you have... You can play 3 on the second string with B7 as well, turning it into a B sharp 9 chord. So... Okay, and then you can use the harmonics again. Or you can arpeggiate something. Okay, now um, this is uh, something that works because B7 to E minor is a dominant line. It's a dominant seventh chord line. And you can use a diminished arpeggio. And for those of you who've never experimented with diminished arpeggios or chords, this would actually open your ears to it. You can play this. Okay? You can play the diminished arpeggio. Let me sh let me show you what it means. Okay, this is the original harmony, and this is the diminished line. Listen to it again. Okay, I'll play the whole line. Say so. And this is the diminished line. Yeah, a little bit of gypsy jazz here. Um, or classical. Classical uses this a lot. So you play the G any way you like, and then you play four on the fourth, two hammer on to five on the third, and then you do the same thing on strings two and one. Four on the, the second string, two hammer on to five on the first. Okay, so it's, it's a very symmetrical fingering. Okay, very easy to remember. Okay, because they do the same thing twice. Okay. okay and then, okay, then you can play all the uh, natural harmonics on 12, 7, and 5. Okay, there's one on 9. Okay, as well. And on 4, it's the same one, but let's not overdo it again. So do this, but why? Um, okay, so this is what you can do as an intro, right? So you can also play the diminished line after B sharp nine, okay, if you like. Okay, it's your experimentation. You can do both. But again, sharp nine is strong enough. It's either sharp nine or diminished for me because you don't want to, again, overdo it. You, you're not showing off here, you're experimenting. And then you have the, the, the verse riff. Um, okay? um, the verse riff is, again, perfection. Okay? You don't have to touch it if you don't want to, but you can you can play variations on it okay just to experiment with your uh improvisation skills e minor and then you have d and then you have c add nine it's c with three on the second string so just just play around with it see what you can come up with arpeggio wise um there you can change the arpeggio you can slide to five and then go to D. Okay, you can do the good old uh, two, three, two on the Eastern. Okay, so. And then you can do again, three, zero on the Eastern. But again, there's not much to do here. Um, I say stick to the intro. So uh, before I play it for you from start to finish and try to come up with uh, the best example I can, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's hundreds of free lessons here for your guitar education enjoyment. Enjoy. Remember this? This is nice.
trying to surprise myself. I don't want to repeat anything I already played. That's how diminished chords work. Um, you can invert it and play it three frets up. So you can start from seven and finish on seven on the E string. Okay, so okay, same shape, same fingering exactly. Okay. You can do it on ten and play it on twelve on the E string. So. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. Bye for now. I'll see you in the next lesson.